In this video, I'd like to quickly walk you through Camera Raw and show you where all the tools and panels are and just give you some sort of clear idea on how to navigate around the software and also show you what are the types of things that you'll be using uh, most often. In future videos, we're going to go in more depth and detail over how to actually use those tools and those panel adjustments to get better results for your photography. So to begin with, you'll notice up in the top left hand corner, you'll have the tools menu. Now this has a range of different tools that are available to you when you're editing your photographs. The first being the zoom tool, which is fairly self-explanatory. It allows you to zoom in on your photo. Now you'll also notice in the uh, left hand bottom corner that you also have the magnification setting here. So you can select the zoom level that you're actually after. And you can also use the plus and minus icons there to do that for you. So you have those. Now you also have the move tool. And the move tool allows you just to basically move your image around. So that's very useful uh, when you're making adjustments to have a look around, especially if you're doing spot uh, removal and things like that to find those different areas. Now another way to get into this tool, say you're on the zoom tool or any other tool for example, if you hold down the space bar that'll bring up the actual hand tool as you can see here. So that's a shortcut to actually using that tool itself. Now you have a couple of other different tools. Let's just fit this to view again. You have a uh, the white balance tool which allows you to adjust the uh, white balance of your image by selecting different areas that you believe are neutral within your image. So for example this white shirt should be fairly neutral and you need to sort of play around with it in order to get the results that you're happy with. You have a color samplers. Now this allows you to place color samplers on your actual image in order to uh, analyze uh, particular values when you're actually making your adjustments. So this is extremely useful when you're doing color balances if you want to make sure you're not adding, uh, you don't have color shifts in certain areas like your highlights, your grays, or your blacks for example. Now along with that you also have the target adjustment tool. Now the target adjustment tool uh, allows you to make adjustments to your image via the uh, panometric, uh, panometric curve or the hue, saturation, and luminance panel or the actual uh, gray scale mix. Now these are quite neat because it actually allows you to make adjustments just by clicking and dragging with your mouse. Um, so it is really, it doesn't really do anything different other than allowing you to actually make those adjustments with your mouth, uh, with your mouse. Sorry. So it is quite interesting and it is quite useful in some particular cases. But we'll go into that in a future uh, video. So let's reset that. Now let's go up the top again. You have the crop tool, and that's quite self-explanatory. So you can crop your image uh, to any particular format that you're after and also you know rotate and whatnot. Now you've also got a drop down menu there that allows you to choose from different uh, ratio formats and also set up a custom one where you can actually choose to set your own particular crop in a ratio uh, in pixels, inches or centimeters. So along with the crop tool you have the straighten tool. Now this is quite good if your your uh, horizons aren't straight and you want to quickly straighten them. So all you do is you drag that along your horizon and you let it go and then it'll obviously it'll crop your image and adjust it accordingly to the actual um, horizon line that you've actually created. So you could do an extreme thing like that. So along with that we have the spot removal tool. Now this is quite neat just for um, allowing you to remove blemishes and dots and spots and uh, also doing cloning in your images. So you can you can go in and utilize it for a range of different applications, but it is it is quite useful, especially um, with camera imperfections. I know for Canon cameras, for example, you end up with dots that come from the sensor in your images. And I think I can see one there. Let's just take a quick look. As you know, yes. There's a couple there. So if I just dive in here for a minute, just and let's say we um, increase the contrast and we just drop the exposure down. There you go. There's an obvious one. Um, so as I was saying, you know, uh, camera imperfections that you have here. So you can click on that. You can enlarge the actual um, radius of the area that you're going to actually be adjusting. And as you can see there, just place the red one over the area that you want to actually um, clone, uh, actually fix and then place the green one over the area that you actually want to use to replace that. So as you can see there, a simple adjustment has now removed that spot. Uh, along with the spot tool, you also have the red eye removal tool, which is just beside it. Let's just 
duck back for a minute and reset that to something that looks half reasonable. Um, you have the red eye removal tool. This is quite neat for obviously removing red eye from portraits when you're using little compact cameras and the flashes directly uh, over the lens or close to the lens. Uh, with that, we also have the adjustment brush. This is great for making um, selections and then actually you're making adjustments to those selections on your images and we go into that in more detail but it also has its own uh, panel on the right hand side when you actually click on it so it gives you options to uh, adjust the exposure brightness contrast saturation clarity and sharpness of your images along with much much more and we'll go into that in more detail later on uh, beside that we have the graduated filter and this allows you to add a graduated um, a graduated filter to your image. So for example, if you had uh, really blown out skies, you could actually add uh, a graduated filter such as this. I'll just add it a bit further to the bottom there. And what you could do with this is go in here and actually add density uh, to that by say adjusting the exposure and whatnot and a few other different things. But obviously for this particular image, it's not actually what I want, uh, but you can sort of get the idea and we'll go into that in more detail later on. From here you have the camera raw preference dialog box, you can click on that and that gives you a range of different preferences uh, of actually configuring camera raw. So for example, it gives you options to configure how you want the actual uh, image settings to be saved, whether you want them in a, a um, XMP file or whether you want them stored in the actual camera raw database, things like that. Also all the other different uh, adjustments. So. For example, if you were to open an image using uh, one particular ISO, you could have one default preset to that, or if you change the actual ISO later on for a different image, then you can actually have different defaults as the actual uh, image adjustments that you use for that particular ISO. Uh, things like sharpening, for example, would be good. You could have two different sharpenings, one for ISO 100 and one for ISO 1600, for example. Uh, it also gives you options to sort of um, uh, how you want your computer to handle the actual uh, raw cache, where you want it to be located and how much you want it to have, and also how you want to handle DNG files, JPEGs and TIFFs. So beside that we have uh, also some rotate, um, rotate tools to rotate your image around. They're quite useful uh, in some particular examples, or some particular cases I should say. Now on the right hand side you'll notice you have a preview uh, a preview checkbox. So for example, if I make some adjustments here, you can go and preview those. So that is extremely useful. Let's just jump back to as shot again. Uh, you also have the little uh, full screen mode where you can actually jump into full screen, which is extremely uh, handy if you want to view more of your image on your computer. Beside that, we have the histogram. And you'll notice up in the top left hand corner and the top right hand corner of the histogram that you have the shadow clipping warning and the highlight clipping warning. Now they're quite useful for when you're making your adjustments, um, notifying you that you've actually clipped the highlights or you've actually blown out certain areas, maybe the shadows for example. So let's just do some extreme adjustments to show you what I'm talking about. So you can see there on the beak it's gone all red and in the sky there it's quite red. And if I drop the uh, recovery down here, you'll notice more red drops in. So they're just areas that it's actually showing you that are actually blown out in the actual image, um, which is very useful when you're actually making your adjustments. You can also, if you hold down Alt, on a PC or option on a Mac when you're actually making adjustments, that'll also show you the actual um, affected areas as well, as you can see there. So that's just a quick little little tip. Um, so if we just go reset once again, underneath the actual histogram, you'll notice you have the RGB values. So if I hover over any uh, value in the image, it'll actually tell me the RGB values of that. So that's extremely useful, you know, especially with white balance and uh, if, if you want to make sure you've got your greys and your blacks sort of perfect so there's no color cast through them, that, that will enable you to actually tell whether they do. So in this particular example, the green's a lot lower than uh, the blue and also the red's slightly lower than the actual green. Um, next under that, oh, actually beside that I should say, you have the uh, camera settings. So these are the settings that obviously the photograph was taken at on your camera. So you know what you're actually working with. Underneath that you have the panels menu. So you have access to a whole range of different panels from curves to sharpening and noise reduction to uh, color control using the HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance 
panel. You also have uh, things like split toning and lens corrections, effects, camera calibration, uh, presets and snapshots, which we'll go into in great detail in future videos. Now below that, we also have some workflow settings just down the uh, middle uh, bottom section here. If you click on these uh, details here, you'll notice you have some workflow options and that allows you to choose a particular color working space, uh, a bit depth that you actually want to work in, say 16 bits. You can also choose a file size, uh, the resolution, uh, whether you'd like to apply sharpening and also if you'd like to open up your uh, image in Photoshop as a smart object, which we'll also go into. Smart objects are amazing and uh, you can do some really neat stuff with them, but we'll talk about them later. Now. You'll also notice on the left hand side down the bottom you have save image. If you click on that, this enables you to save uh, not only the image you're working on, but also if you had multiple images open at one time, a big batch, if you want to save all of them, you can save them to a particular folder on your computer. You can rename them, uh, which is extremely useful. You can then also choose the file format. So you can choose to save them as DNGs if they're not in that format already. Uh, choose to save them as JPEGs, TIFFs, or PSDs, so whichever um, fancies, uh, whichever one that you prefer to work in, you can uh, save them as, which is extremely useful. You can also choose uh, other settings under here that uh, per those formats as to how those formats are actually configured. The last thing that we'll talk about is just down the bottom here, you can either open your images uh, in Photoshop, you can obviously cancel or you can go done. If you go done, it'll retain any of those adjustments that you've made to your images. It'll actually save them and keep them for uh, later on, for the next time you actually open up that file. And I've forgotten one thing, one thing that I did not mention. If you go up to the actual panel options up here on the right hand side, you've got a little drop down uh, menu. Now this allows you to set the image settings uh, and your camera raw defaults. So for example, you can have particular settings for different situations and you can flick between those or you can set them as your defaults when you automatically open your images up in camera raw. Along with that, you can also choose to export your settings to XMP, uh, update your DNG previews. Um, you can also save your settings, so any adjustments you make to uh, camera raw to your actual image, you can save them and then load them up at a later date and reuse them for other images that you do. And just down the bottom here, you can save uh, new camera raw defaults, which is extremely useful, or reset to the old camera re reset to the old camera raw defaults. So that's another navigational menu that you can play around with, and it's. It's got a lot of um, functionality and it's extremely useful. So that's a quick walkthrough of Camera Raw. Um, I hope you found that sort of uh, enlightening and useful. In the coming videos, we're gonna go into some real detail as to how to use each feature that is available to you in Camera Raw.